Welcome, everybody. I'm Mark Marquette of the American Space Museum, and you're here to stay curious. We've got a wonderful show about NASA launching five dogs in space on this date 26 years ago. And we're going to look at how many humans have gone to space. We're going to look at our humans in space right now and those that have recently been to space. And just kind of a question, how many spaceships have been launched that have had Americans on board, NASA astronauts. So while you're thinking about that number, we're going to welcome everybody to another week of this wonderful Stay Curious program that we are now broadcasting on Facebook, we're on Twitch, and we're on YouTube. And can't thank Jessica Galloway, who's our computer engineer, has made this show look better and helping us reach out more. And as Jessica says, share, like, subscribe, and follow. And tell your friends about it, because we believe we're giving you some little content every day, every weekdays, that is a little different than the mainstream space news out there. We dwell on space history, astronaut birthdays, current events, and kind of a program like today where we meld it all together and make you think a little bit. And so we're going to kick it off today here with a, a just to remember our seven Expedition 65 crew members that are orbiting Earth 17 times a day right now about 225 miles overhead. They've been up there, the the uh, Crew Dragon three that have been up there, been up there uh, almost five months, and they might come back the beginning of November when we have a crew swap out with three more members of Expedition 66. I got Marty Winkle behind the camera and, and supplying me with all kinds of good uh, production notes throughout the week to get this going. Marty's a space worker. Uh, who helped launch these dogs I'm going to talk about here in a minute. But uh, 52 years ago, Marty, can you believe it's been that long that he was clocking in as a Grumman electrical engineer on the lunar module, clocking in at 7.30 at night and getting off at 8 in the morning, working on those lunar modules that ended up on the surface of the moon. And, of course, the, the upper stage brought them back to the command module. And that Last time we did that was 49 years ago in December. So always glad to have Marty with us contributing. Going to have him zoom in on a couple of things here in a minute. But we're talking about our astronauts in space right now. On the, the 20 years we've been occupied continuously in space. Left to right is uh, flight engineer uh, Peter Dubrov, a Russian, of course. Shane Kimbrough's to the left or to the right of him. And Megan MacArthur. Uh, remember, she celebrated her 50th ber birthday in space last week. Thomas Piquet, commander, is uh, Akihoko Hashidi from the Japan Space Agency. And the flight engineers are Olag Navinsky and Mark Vandehey. Mark Vandehey on the right, making his second trip to the space station and a, a well-experienced astronaut. And these are our space people that are up there now doing science, doing research, uh, doing things that are helping improve our, our life. And on this shuttle mission we're going to celebrate here in a moment, you're going to see how they did 26 years ago, stuff that's going on the space station now. Yes, Jessica. Uh, okay. Uh, she had a note there for me there. Um, uh, anyway, it concerns our guests for tomorrow, but we're, I'll tell you about that in a minute here. We are indebted to these people, what they're doing right now in space, and, and what they're doing is stuff that 26 years ago a shuttle mission was doing uh, to learn how to do that on a space station. So also in space right now, we have these three Chinese Takionauts. They've been up there for almost three months. You forget that China has their own space station. Okay, and that space station is called Heavenly Palace, Tangong. And they have two units put up there, and it's going to be a lot bigger in a few years. You better believe it. And uh, we're speculating that these three men are going to come back sometime in the next week or two, and then there'll probably be a week or so pause, and then they're going to rush. China has said they will launch three more uh, Takio knots, including another woman. They've launched two women in space. I don't know if it's going to be one of those or a rookie woman. But of these three men, one has been in space uh, uh, twice, one has been in space once, and one's a rookie. So they are really training their uh, space 
men and women to do things on their own space station. And we're going to talk today about that crew mission STS-26 launched in space on, not 26, STS-69 launched in space 26 years ago today. And this was the 100th NASA human space flight on September 7th, 1995. Uh, and it begs the question later on, how many have been launched up to 2021? 20, uh, and we'll tell you that answer in a few minutes, but... This crew has, has uh, got in front of them dog dishes during their pre-launch meal. All right, it was an 11 o'clock afternoon, 11 o'clock morning launch. Uh, here is uh, the patch that they had, dog crew two, all right? And this was a, uh, dog crew two was in the spirit of camaraderie that began on an earlier flight, uh, STS-53, in which Jim Voss and his commander for this mission, David Walker, were crew members. So everybody adopted a dog theme name, and uh, they even sported that patch. And as you see, their names are on the dog dishes in front of them there. What fun astronauts have. They were Red Dog, who's the commander, David Walker, on his fourth and last flight. Cujo was pilot Ken Cockrell on his second of five flights. Dog Face was Jim Voss third of five flights. Pluto was Jim Newman, and this was his second of four shuttle flights. And the underdog was, of course, the rookie, Michael Gernhardt, in this picture there. Michael Gernhardt's on the far left, and you see their names on there. And uh, so a lot of fun they had with this, even their own patch, uh, which is kind of cool to look at there. Uh, a picture of a patch there that we had in our collection of things in, in our uh you that we sell on eBay and Marty I'm gonna while we look at the launch of STS 69 I'm gonna have Marty zoom in on a couple items that are 26 years old here here's the crew patch that uh, we have there that looks good Marty yep crew patch is an interwoven like the, the number 69 okay a play on that very beautiful patch one of my favorites and then, Jessica, 26 years ago, this on your car would get you in the causeway with as many people as you get in your vehicle. No seat belts included, uh, people in there uh, to watch the launch. And then here we have the press kit, and it's green, greenish color there with our green screen in the background. This is the 26 years old with all kinds of press information of things that uh, went on in the mission. All right, this is fresh. Oh, that's all green. Look at that. That's okay, interesting. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> I got to get used to that, folks, this technology. Uh, Marty and I did it about a year and a half old school, and uh, we enjoy doing it this way. And uh, it's, it's a lot of because of your help, your contributions, and we'll be talking about that later in the week that has enabled us to take Stay Curious to this level. So wanted to show share some of those items. Yeah, you got your press kit. You got a, a subway. I want fifteen or twenty dollars for a causeway pass, and uh, of course you got a ten dollar patch there. So you know that's a good thirty, forty dollar eBay item there that we'd love for you to uh, check out. Maybe we'll post that one up there. But uh, the mission was all about uh, some science. There was an ultraviolet telescope on board. There was the Spartan uh, uh, two hundred one flyer, which the arm of the shuttle released and then retrieved it was investigating charged solar panels and there was this this object this is a 12 foot diameter science payload called the wake shield facility and you're like mark don't bore us with a bunch of science that they did on the space the shuttle we know we know it was all good stuff but you know this little pallet here might someday have found out a way to make retinas replacing the human eyeball retina so that blind people could see again. And that is what this, one of the things this mission was all about. The, uh, the wake shield uh, facility was released from behind the shuttle. Uh, its speed was three or four times faster than the thermospheric gas molecules that were in the area, which resulted in a, a clean cone behind the, in the wake is where it got its name. And there they, they, they created a vacuum system to study film growth. And that kind of film growth of, of photoelectric cells, uh, thin polymers, uh, super thin polymers, 
and uh, tiny ceramic detectors as well as artificial retinas are what may have come out of this type of experiment done on the space station. This was in what I call the middle third of the space station's era, where we were, <clears throat> uh, of course, the first uh, third of the shuttle was the first 25 launches when we thought it was going to be a, a big space truck. And then the middle third was, well, we're not going to be a space truck, but we need to do a lot of science. And we need to learn how to build the space station. And the last third of the shuttle missions are devoted to the space station, as well as some of them science. And there's a beautiful liftoff uh, 26 years ago of the Dog 2 crew of Space Transportation System 69. And we love giving you that kind of history. There's the Dog crew, the Wakefield. And we're going to segue from that into about astronauts or space flyers that we've had recently, as well as a couple on the horizon here. In fact, these four, Marty brought the newspaper in today, and you're going to have some green screen uh, uh, holes in that, which I was playing with. Love it. Uh, today's uh, Florida Today uh, newspaper has that this will be the first time an all-civilian crew is to orbit the Earth. And Netflix is documenting the entire process of what is called Inspiration 4, a Crew Dragon capsule that's to be launched just 10 miles from where I'm sitting at Pad 39A at uh, uh, Kennedy Space Center. And uh, they haven't given a time for that, so we don't know if we're going to be able to bring it to you live or not, but that's going to be a week from Wednesday. And Inspiration is the name given by the billionaire... Uh, tech multi-billionaire Jared Isaacman, and Isaacman is on the left over here, and uh, he is funding this whole mission, and he has on it, uh, two people were chosen in a lottery, the the uh, the lady in the middle right uh, is Haley Arsenault, and she was treated for bone cancer at St. Jude's Hospital, and that's what this Isaacman, the billionaire, he was a a physician there at St. Jude's Research Hospital, and they were trying to raise money for the hospital to help those kids out, and aborted is Haley Arsenault. She was a uh, a, a patient there, Chris uh, Sembrowski, and uh, Cyan Proctor. Cyan Proctor is the other lady on board there. So this will be exciting stuff, okay, but believe you me, space is not easy. So uh, they have been... Ha their flight review has been approved, and they're all ready to go. We're just waiting on the time they're going to do that. And they're just going to spend three days up there and uh, orbiting the Earth. They're not going to the space station. And uh, so we'll be watching that, uh, of course, uh, and, and have a, a more in-depth program about that for you next week on Stay Curious. They're going to be looking out a cupola. Look how cool is this. For this, would you like to be looking out that window, Jessica? Marty, how cool would that be? They're replacing the docking collar unit that would go to the space station with this 180 degree bubble. Uh, those things scare the heck out of me. <laughs> that, that, that I'm sure they know how to make them strong and so forth to survive the void of space. You see a little cap there that uh, opens up where the docking collar would be. So we're going to see some fabulous stuff, and and I understand that it is going to be on Netflix. Uh, a documentary on this so uh, a new space age here in the 21st century and we're taking you along for a ride here at stay curious and of course recently we had jeff bezos in the middle with uh the uh uh oh give me her name marty toy's name ah so we're blanking out here i got a senior moment on this monday here Wally Funk there in the middle. She was a Mercury uh, lady astronaut. And uh, there's uh, the young man, 18, and, and Bezos' brother. They went to space. Yes, they made it to space. 15 minutes suborbital flight. That was July 20th. And July 11th, of course, Sir Richard Branson, another billionaire there, uh, with these uh, crew members and pilots, went uh, with his Virgin Galactic to the edge of space and back. So this does beg the question from me here on Stay Curious is uh, how many space flight launches have there been with Americans on board, which makes them an official NASA space flight? All right. And there we have, I'm going to first tell you how, think about it. 
100, 20, 100 had, was hit uh, 26 years ago in 1995. So in 2021, okay, 26 years later, how many have been in space? Well, we're talking not astronauts. We're talking about the number of spaceships launched that have a human from America on board. And that short answer is 234. All right. That doesn't count the X-15 suborbital flights. It does count uh, STS-51L, the Challenger, because it was launched with a crew on board. And you're counting 65 Soyuz spacecrafts, all right? But here we got the Mercury guys. That's easy to count. There were six of them, six space flights individually with the Mercury. And then you had the Gemini astronauts, and there was 11 Gemini space flights in 1965 and 66. Then we had Skylab, uh, uh the Apollo, I'm sorry, Gemini had 10, 10, 10 launches, and I was looking ahead that Apollo had 11 crewed launches, and then you had the the, uh, the three Skylab uh, crews launches, and then you had the Apollo Soyuz test project where we shook hands with Russia in 1975, uh, that counts as one. Then we had 135 space shuttle flights. There's our that's the uh, that is the Bugs. That's the uh, NASA's uh, uh, 18th astronaut crew called the Bugs. And they're in the, in the front row in the brunette right there. That's Nicole Stott. And Nicole Stott's going to be here November 20th for a book signing. And then you've got the commercial, the Russians. All right. When the shuttle era ended in 2011, we had 65 launches in that 10-year period before we sent the Crew Dragon to the space station. And look at how cramped that is, and you're paying 60 to $70 million to sit in that seat on the way up to space and on the way back. And then we've got the commercial crew program. Of here are some of the, the astronauts that were announced for that. Uh, I believe one of them, uh, Ferguson, might not be in there because he stepped down. But uh, there you've got Suni uh, Williams on the on the left side there, and uh, Glover's on the right. But these were the astronauts that NASA loaned to SpaceX and Boeing for their spacecraft that you see behind there. And so we've got three of those, and we're waiting for the Artemis program to put some people in space. And... Uh, when we were doing a little pre-production meeting here, Marty said, what? No Howard Wallowitz? Doesn't uh, Big Bang Theory count as one uh, in that? So the total is 234 spaceships have been launched with humans on board uh, in the history of, of, of our space program and the history of the world for that matter. So, And we don't want to forget our seven heroes up there right now doing a lot of important stuff. They're doing stuff for cancer research and and uh, uh, all, co all kinds of diseases and other ways to make our lives happy. You know it, and that's why we pay attention to what's going on. And there's an app for that. If you want to see the space station go over your, your home uh, during the evening, usually once a month it's in the morning sky and once a month in the evening sky and the other two weeks it's just not visible because it's in the daytime of course it does pass overhead all the time in the daytime uh 90 minutes to circle the earth 17 sunrises and sunsets a day for these folks expedition 65. so we're so glad that you're with us today do we have anything to clean up with our guests we want to tell you that we have tomorrow astronaut Andy Allen is with us in the in our Stay Curious set. He'll be here. We're going to talk about his two missions as a pilot and one as a commander. And he is now the uh, general manager and uh, vice president of the Jacobs Technologies. Jesse's yeah. well, we'll ask him tomorrow, Jesse, because that's what I put on Facebook. And uh, he is a he is one of the upper tier managers working on the Artemis program to take us back to the moon. Andy Allen is a great warm guy. You're going to enjoy our conversation with Andy. And uh, we got some stuff to show him and maybe a surprise or two for him. But uh, we're looking forward to that. I met the gentleman before and uh, he'll have a lot of great insight into stuff. Maybe maybe like about the dog crew. All right. We'll ask him about that because he trained with all those guys. He was an astronaut until about 1997, I believe. So 
And we've got uh, next week, we have got Ron Guerin, an astronaut that's lived 177 days in space. He's got three books out, Ron Guerin does. He's going to be here Thursday next week. He's doing a CNN report on television for the Inspiration for launch, and then he's promised to come here for a book signing after that. Uh, Marty, you've got a question from somebody. We've got uh, hopefully Melissa Pope's watching at the Space Coast Office of Tourism and Christopher Mix in Hudson, Wisconsin. Um, we want to know what the app is to follow the space station. The app to follow the space station? Or, or there, there's many apps for that. Thanks for that question. Uh, uh, spot the space station is, is one that I know off the top of my head, but you just go to whichever Android or iPhone you service you get and just put uh, seeing the space station in there. And there'll be three or four. Uh, mine says space station, but I'll always have a lot of other information on there. Sunrise, sunset, moonrise. You can put the Hubble telescope in there, other satellites. You'll see a lot of satellites uh, in the twilight of evening or morning because that's when they're catching the, the solar panels and bright parts of those spacecraft and reflecting it down to our eyes. So very fun to watch. Thank you for that. In fact, mark that down, Jessica and Marty, my co-producers, will have a program on that and show you how to download an app and see the space station. It's a lot of fun, and you can wave at those seven astronauts there and wish them well. But believe you me, in about a month, there's going to be a lot going on to, to uh, uh, or two months probably, to bring this crew uh, of three back. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, Van, Van Hyde uh, is going to stay up there, maybe pushing 11 months, maybe even 12 months. So uh, it's a fluid situation up there, depending on how we've got these spacecraft to go up there and bring the humans back and forth. So glad you've enjoyed the program with us today. On behalf of our nonprofit, the American Space Museum, we want to let you know that uh, you're special and we're going to show special ways that you can help us uh, beginning uh, later in the week. And with that, I'm Mark Marquette, and we will see you with astronaut Andy Allen tomorrow to bridge the space between us.